Good morning students. Welcome back to the lecture, my theory lecture on uh, paper 1, section C, drama, uh, a doll's house. As you all know, this lecture is addressed to students of BA part 2, students of English literature, BA part 2. And I am discussing paper 1, section C. This is Ibsen's Famous play, A Doll's House. And I, in the earlier video, I was discussing with you the title of the play, right? So now look at the title of the play. A Doll's House, right? A means one. A doll, as I told you in the earlier video, when I say the word doll, what comes to your mind? Immediately, when I say the word doll, um, the pictures of a beautiful plaything come to your mind. A, a, a plaything which has got blue eyes and something with which you play for a while and then put aside something which you don't take seriously. So a doll, right? And then look at the next word, house. They have not said home. The, the playwright, the dramatist has not used the word home. So there is a major difference. You see, this is a big issue over here. There's a major difference between a home and a house. Now, house is a, just a building. A house is a building which is made with bricks, stones and cements, right? And a home is a place which has got feelings, which has got warmth, which has got laughter, which has got happiness, which has got joy, which has got sadness, which has got dreams. So, a home is different from a house. A house is just a physical structure. Right? And the title of your play is not home, not a doll's home, but a doll's house. So the title itself reflects the main ideology that the dramatist is about to present in front of you. Right? So the title of the play is A Doll's House. Let us now look at the characters. So you have three major characters, four major characters in this play. The names of these characters are most important, Nora Hammer. Nora Hammer is the central character of the play. The play revolves around this woman, Nora Hammer. She is the wife of Torvald Hammer. The second character of the play is Torvald Hammer. And then you, uh, Torvald Hammer is a manager in the bank and Nora is his wife. They have three children. And um, they have a, a seemingly happy home. But basically it is just a house as we will say, see in the play. And then you have two more characters. One is Christine Linde and one more is um, Crockstead. Alright. So it's a very interesting play. You have just four major characters. And uh, it, is, it is presenting... Uh, clash very many issues right so as i had told you the first two major issues are a doll and a her house right so a doll's house and then you have issues like there's a clash of ideologies you see nora helmer who is the central character of the play represents the romantic ideology romantic as different as the opposite of or as different from the realistic ideology Hammer represents the Hammer represents the realistic ideology, and Nora represents the romantic ideology. Now, the, what is the romantic ideology? This is not the this is romance in English literature, as I had told you, means something mystical, something which is hidden, something which is not very open, not very clear, something mystical. So she represents the romantic ideology. What is the romantic ideology? Romantic idea in the the people who believe in the romantic ideology are people who believe that something something miraculous is going to happen. They wait. They are all their life. They are waiting for a miracle to happen. Whereas people of the realistic ideology are people who take the day as it comes, who take time 
as it comes you know if it is a difficult time they take it as it comes and they save for a rainy day they don't have any illusions about life they believe in reality they believe in things that are happening actually happening in front of them they do not have any um, uh, illusions they do not have any high imaginations they they, are, they don't expect a miracle now nora Uh, is representing the romantic ideology we it means that she is expecting a miracle to be taking place right so these are some this is a, a theoretical background these are some of the points that i have uh, some of the issues that are being presented in the play and i have introduced you to the, to them you have to read the text carefully we will do it together but you have to read the text carefully and then you will be able to understand and now i will continue in my third video i will tell you the story of the play so that you can understand the play as you read it now i am continuing in my next video in the third video i will continue with this lecture thank you